Well, I've been through that strait many, many times and everything from destroyers to aircraft carriers. I've escorted tankers through it. It's only about 30 miles wide, which I guess sounds like a lot, but it's actually a very narrow choke point. And as you say, I think the number is about 35 percent of all seaborne oil passes through that strait. It is critical. We've seen this movie before. The Iranians have threatened to close the strait on numerous occasions in the 80s and 90s. They made some moves toward actually doing that. That created a U.S. combat response called Praying Mantis in the late 1980s. And the Iranians could close that strait for a period of time, probably days, maybe a few weeks. The real dark end of the spectrum would be if they dumped thousands of mines into the water. It takes a long time to clear mines. So this is very turbulent and very critical, and we ought to be concerned about the president, uh, if you will, screaming at the Iranians. It marks a sharp turn against Iran. His national security advisor is tough on Iran. His secretary of defense, Jim Mattis, tough on Iran. I would pay attention to this as a potential crisis moving toward us. Not here yet, but could come. Fred, your assessment of the situation after he shouted using capital letters. <laughs> well, first of all, it's always great to be on with Admiral Stavridis, with Jim Stavridis. Uh, the, um, you have to watch the economics alongside the security issues. And on the economics, November 4th is the date at which the Iranian oil boycott is supposed to take place under U.S. sanctions. They want to, it to go down to zero. That would be 2.3 uh, million barrels uh, out of the market every day. Even with some of the exemptions, it could be as many as a million barrels off the market every day. And then in the same time, you have the Iranian currency going down in worth. You have uh, prices going up. You've got more protests on the streets. So what the administration may be playing for, uh, and Secretary Pompeo pointed in this direction on Sunday, talking to an Iranian-American group in, in California, is regime change through their own people. Now, that's a big bet, and I don't think that comes anytime soon, but the pressures have grown on the Ayatollah, and the questions, pr qu pressures have grown on the government in general because of the bad economy. It's, in inter it's right. interesting to see the reaction in the oil market. You know, pre-market, when everybody was sort of digesting this tweet, we had Brent down by 1.5%. We've got Brent down by less than a half a percent now, sort of just shrugging this all off. I asked an analyst if, if granting waivers to our allies for these sanctions if that's even in the books or in the price. And he said, no, it doesn't seem like the markets are, react, are treating this with any concern at all, Fred. Is that, is that wrong? Is that... Uh, uh, I, I, it, it befuddles me what is going to make markets worried these days. Uh, you're looking at uh, talk of, uh, of trade wars. You're looking at geopolitical uncertainties of the sort that we haven't seen in a long, long time. And I think people keep thinking that President Trump goes in for, with these as extreme negotiating positions. So the other uh, comparison you could look at is fire and fury last August on North Korea. Again, Secretary Pompeo uh, suggests this could be the case. This isn't a president who's shown he likes to make war. This is a president who's shown he likes to try to make do deals. And so that's what he did with North Korea at a time when all of us thought, well, he's actually ratcheting up the, the tensions. So it could also go in that direction. I think that's what the markets are, are Admiral Stavridis, Stavridis um, to enforce sanctions uh, against Iran, it would seem that we would need a lot of international cooperation, principally among our allies. How do you characterize our relationships right now with our allies, particularly in light of the NATO summit last week? Yeah, they would. I'll use a technical term here. We've cratered those relationships. <laughs> um, and, and I am getting constant phone calls. I'm sure my very good friend Fred Kemp is as well from our contacts in Europe. I was with two uh, European heads of state in the last uh, several days, in fact. Uh, they are befuddled. They are hurt. Uh, they are, that creaking sound you hear is the transatlantic bridge. I do want to pick up on one other point Fred made about North Korea. The big difference here is geography. This really is the revenge of geography. Uh, Korea is a peninsula. There's not much uh, of significance, no choke holds. With those straits, Iran has a big card to play. They'd be playing with fire to use it, but the potential for them to play that geographic card is there. And lastly, I'll say that um, our allies are not in any state to come rushing into another war in the Middle East. 
uh, particularly after the events is of the NATO possible? summit. Is war in the, the Middle East possible summer. as a result of this? Do you see, is war possible, probable? Is it a ridiculous question to ask? It's not a ridiculous question to ask. And uh, the Uber concern is that somehow this will drag the Sunni states, uh, Saudi Arabia, the Gulf states, who sit right across the Arabian Gulf, Persian Gulf, from Iran into a conflict. Um, that gets into a broad regional war. Is that a high percentage? Not at all. Is it a probability? No. I'd say the possibility is in the 10% range. Uh, but the tension that went into the system today uh, makes me at least pay more attention to this than I have been as opposed to North Korea. You worried about war? I, I would add only one thing to, uh, to what Admiral Stavridis said, and that is uh, Iran facing off against Israel and Syria. Uh, there, I think you really do have a, a situation that could get hot if the Israelis aren't satisfied that the, uh, the Russians uh, and, the, and the Syrians aren't moving the Iranians a little bit further back from the border. But I agree uh, with Jim Stavridis that the notion uh, of it happening in Iran, between Saudi Arabia and Iran, is there. It was out of the question a while ago. It's back on the radar screen again, but I would also say it wouldn't be much more than 10 percent right now. But that's still a one out of 10 chance of that sort of horrible thing happening. We shouldn't even be there. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.